Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I fast drafted the first draft of a novel in November 2020. I wrote 50,000 words in 23 days. There were multiple days where I wrote over 3,000 words in one day, and on my biggest writing day I wrote 7,000 words. The finished draft is a mess of course, and there was a huge learning curve during the month, but I thought I'd share some of the things that I found helped me get through the process. First, a small disclaimer. In addition to everything I'm about to talk about, the biggest thing that helped me was that I did not have any conflicting responsibilities, like another job or children. I was basically a full-time author for that month. So while I'm sharing what I learned, I am fully aware that what works for one person's circumstances may not for another set of circumstances. Number one, I pre-planned every scene. I referred at first to the Save the Cat method, which is a screenwriting plotting method that I'm sure you're all familiar with. And I do recommend that book if you are looking for a guide for plotting a solid commercial type story. I also did a lot of freestyle brainstorming, and I also referred to Maggie Stiefvater's writing course, which I'll link down below, to help me decide what to prioritize in the writing process. This meant that before I started writing, I knew, or thought I knew, all three acts of my story down to the scene, including what each character's motivation was in each scene. This made it easier for me to write a lot every day because all my creative energy could be devoted to transferring ideas into words rather than coming up with ideas on the fly. Number two, I made a schedule ahead of time that fit my lifestyle. If you'd like more info on this, I would recommend watching a YouTube video on the Courtney Project's YouTube channel, which I'll link below, about creating a realistic writing schedule. But uh, essentially, I chose to give myself a day off here and there, and on the days that I did write, I varied my writing goals per day, rather than writing the exact same number of words every day. I found that my schedule worked pretty well, but there is one change I'd make. You can see how I basically created an arc each week, with the lowest word counts at the beginning and end of the week, and the highest word count in the middle. But I found that I'd often be extra tired or uninspired the day after writing 3,000 or more words, so next time I would structure my schedule to allow for that. My ideal schedule now would probably look like climbing to 3,000 words per day over the course of three to four days, and then starting over again the following day from zero or a thousand words. Three. As I mentioned earlier, I participated in NaNoWriMo to help stay committed to the project. You can do this at any time of year, not just in November, but I do recommend setting a challenge that others can see too. I found it fun and rewarding to enter my word count into the tracker every day, but it's also motivating to know that your progress is recorded for others to see and for you to look back on in the future. Number four. In the same vein, I also told my family and my friends about my goal so that they could support me and keep me accountable too. As great as taking part in an online challenge is, it's easier to give up if you think no one's watching. I found it extra motivating to know that people in my real life were expecting me to finish the challenge as well. 5. I set up a reward system. Even the simplest of rewards can help motivate us. I was very basic and gave myself a sticker for every writing day where I met my goal. 6. I broke down my word goal into smaller chunks throughout the day. Alright, I'm back. I did 1400 words of writing this morning, which was a great start. Now it's the afternoon, I don't feel so much like writing anymore, but um, I'm still gonna do it and get at least 500, hopefully a thousand words, so that then for my third writing session of the day, it'll just be the final, hopefully 1500 words. It would have seemed really daunting to sit down and tell myself that I had to write 2000 words then and there but 500 or 1,000 words seemed easier, and by the end of those, let's say 500 words, I'd probably have some momentum going and it'd be easy to convince myself to push through another 500. Then I'd take a break for a few hours and do another writing session of 500 to 1,000 words. Seven, I let myself write the scenes out of order. I think today I'm gonna switch to the end of the novel because today's a higher word count day and I'm just, I don't, I'm not familiar enough yet with the arc of the story, I think, in order to write the middle of it. And this may be a big mistake, but I decided I'm going to do it anyway, and hopefully it works out. 
This is probably a controversial tip. To be honest, I'm not sure if I recommend this myself, although probably not for the reason you're thinking. I just found it a bit of a letdown to reach my 50k in a random scene in the middle of the book. I am kind of aware that I won't have the same sense of completion when I do get to the end of NaNoWriMo as I would have if I ended it by writing the end of the novel. And basically, like, I'll just feel like I finished when I reach the word count, which to me it isn't quite as satisfying. But in terms of completing a fast draft, letting myself jump ahead to a different scene and then fill in the gaps later did help me keep up momentum. I would write shorter scenes on lower word count days and longer scenes on higher word count days. And if I wasn't feeling a particular scene one day, it didn't stop me in my tracks because I would just pick another scene that I knew was coming up later in the book that I was more excited to write. And then on a different day, I would come back once I was feeling more prepared to write that original scene. Eight. I didn't edit words that I had already written, but I allowed myself to revise the plot as I went. Even though I had pre-plotted, I realized partway through the book that I hadn't plotted enough, as I mentioned earlier. I'm averaging at 16,000 words for 16 scenes, so 1,000 words per scene, which is not good because I only have about like 45 scenes or something, so I'm not even going to get to the 50,000 that I need to finish NaNoWriMo, let alone like the, you know, 70,000 that I was hoping this book would be. I gave myself some time to reassess and brainstorm to see how I could fill in those plot holes as I went along. After I finished writing last night, I ended up spending more time thinking about the story and I realized that I have actually underdeveloped the main character and her boyfriend. So that was actually kind of a relief to realize because that explains why so far the novel is coming out fairly short. So I do agree that it's not good if you are fast drafting to stop and revise words you've already written. But for me personally, one of the reasons I was able to keep up momentum and reach that 50k was because if I realized there was a problem with the plot, I stopped and addressed it rather than trying to plow forward with words that I wasn't feeling. So the ones with pink are scenes that I haven't actually written anything for yet. And then also I had more ideas for the beginnings. And I really think the middle needs some more too. Nine, I kept going. This is the step that's probably hardest to do, but will also make all the difference if you do do it. There were a lot of times when I felt underconfident about my manuscript. I did start to feel somewhat disappointed in the manuscript. Like I started to think about how all the things that are wrong with it. But um, then I remind myself that this is just the first draft and everyone says that writing a book is hard, obviously. And like the reason NaNoWriMo exists is because if challenges like that didn't exist, a lot of people just wouldn't do it. So reminding myself that was good and um, now I'm going to get back to more writing. It's uh, mid-afternoon now. And today is actually 3,000 word gold day. We'll see if I get there. I, I think I can, but it's just a matter of actually spending the time. Or when I procrastinated because I wasn't feeling inspired anymore. Today I'm in major procrastination mode. <laughs> it's already the evening and I haven't done any writing. And I've just been doing different things like going... Christmas shopping. Now I came to do yoga in the basement. Anyway, it'll still be nice to do yoga and then after that I actually really have to get down to writing. But even though it was really hard, I trusted that it would still be worth it to finish the draft and now I'm really happy that I did. 10. I took steps to make my writing environment and process enjoyable. I know that that last point was on the heavier side, but I also had lots of fun throughout the process and doesn't have to be torture. I made sure to vary my writing locations, for example. I wrote at my desk, on my bed, in my husband's study, even outside in the backyard. I also made tea sometimes or lit candles.
If I got tired of writing on my computer, I switched up the writing format and wrote by hand using fun stationery. Basically, my tip here is to look for ways to make your writing environment comfortable and supportive while you draft. I'm going to end this video with some footage of me reaching my NaNoWriMo goal. But before that, I just wanted to mention that I wouldn't write the way I did during that month all of the time. I can tell from watching my footage back that I did get a little loopy at times due to the amount of writing. It's great to be productive, but we also need rest and balance in our lives. So know that after this moment of victory, I spent a month doing pretty much the opposite of this. With that being said, let's get into the footage where I actually finished that 50k challenge. So I wrote over a thousand words, which means that there's actually only about 900 left. And it's just after 5 p.m. now, and I feel like I'm on a roll, so I think I'm just going to finish it now. So hopefully by 6 p.m. I'll have a finished first draft. It's done. I'll show you.